Hello, Brian Haddix from The Vintage Type. Guys, I wanted to show you something I just was able to get and put in my small collection. This is a Sun Number no. 2, and I got it from a collection down in California. And I wanted to say thank you to four people. That would be uh, Kathy, Oli, Lex, and Scott. And Scott was the wheel man. He was the gentleman that drove this up. Uh, actually, these, I, got a, I was able to get a few machines from this collection. And this one was the easiest to put back into working condition because it was pretty much working. It had been sitting for a while, so it needed a little oil. So I blew it out lightly, uh, put a little oil on the uh, necessary areas, and replaced one spring right up here. And it works quite well. I'm not sure if I'm if it's an inherent part of the machine or if I'm doing something wrong or maybe I have something adjusted a little off. But if I type slowly, um, this, this little guy right here um, kind of sticks. And that is the felt roller that the ink sits on. But if I type quickly, it doesn't have a problem with sticking. So it moves out of the way after it deposits. If it had ink on it, it's all dried out now. And I need to find a source for uh, purple ink. And that's what this has on it or had on it. So uh, when I type quickly, the ink roller applies the ink to the hammer and then lets the hammer hit the, the uh, paper that would be on the platen and then go back. But if I go slow, then it catches. So I think that's just part of the machine. Um, the other thing I wanted to do is I was really interested in this guy, the way um, the engineers made this work. It's very simple. Uh, but it does the job, and it does it quite creatively. Uh, so I wanted to show you some of the uh, features and levers and knobs uh, that the thing, this thing has. So uh, let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so on my kitchen table studio, <laughs> here is the uh, case that the sun came in. There's not much left of it. It's pretty dry and, uh, oh, I don't know, shriveled. <laughs> But this is what kept this guy safe and uh, so well preserved over the years. It's a beautiful case. I'm sure it was a, a really expensive option to have. Um, it's a hard case and with a pretty velvet lining in it. Um, but that is definitely what made this machine uh, last in the condition that it's in. So the, the, uh, the case really did its job. So the first thing I noticed when I got the machine was this little uh, lever right here. When I saw pictures online I always wondered uh, what that did. And so I pushed right here and what it does it releases the escapement and allows you to move the carriage. So it's a carriage release. So then to reactivate it, you just push the space bar back down and then you can type as normal. And the shift mechanism was pretty creative as well. Of course, you have the uh, capitals and figures and since it's a uh, three bank machine. But what I thought was interesting is the bar comes right out here. And so when you push down on the capitals, that bar goes straight down into the first notch. And then if you want to lock the, the uh, carriage up on the uh, setting for the capitals, then you move that lever over. The figures part is way over here. So what it does is when you push that down, you can see this bar move. And what it does is it kind of twists a little bit and moves the whole thing over so it goes down into that lower notch and then you can lock it into place. And it's a pretty seamless operation, so if you have capitals and figures. But there's a definite notch in there that those have to hit, and by um, making this the way they did, it just does it seamlessly, which I thought was pretty, pretty creative. And then I talked about it before, but it has an ink roller instead of a ribbon. And there's the small one, and there's the large reservoir that every time you type, the small 
uh, small one hits the big one and resupplies the little little ink roller. I think a lot of the um, machines or a few of the machines at the time had that system and that was uh, I know the Blick had it, the Yoast had it, but the Yoast had more of a, a, a felt band that it used so anyway it, they didn't use ribbon so that was kind of a thing for a little while and I thought I always think that's pretty neat uh, the only problem I have is I have not been able to find a source for purple ink because that's what that took. I'd like to stay with, I'd like to keep it original. And moving to the side, I mentioned that I had to replace one spring and that was this spring under here and that's for the line spacing. And right now it's set on single spacing, but there is a, a spot under here where you can do double spacing. So when you wanted to advance the carriage, you had to do it in two operations. You had to slide the carriage all the way over and then you also had to uh, advance one line. So it was a little different than a lot of the machines of the day where it was all in one operation. So let's move this back. I think this little lever is pretty cool. And um, so your ratchet release is here as well. You pull this back and then if you push it um, towards the carriage it'll lock onto this pin and then you have the ratchet release and if you just want to hold it back for a minute of course you just pull that back and then release it. Then in the back um, one of the nice things about this machine or one of the cool things about it is it's pretty from every angle. This kind of a art deco or art nouveau type of thing every the lines back here are all sweepy and curvy very pretty uh, very pretty, well done. Um, what I didn't realize, I thought this machine was uh, mostly made of tin, but the bottom is cast iron, and the back, uh, a lot of the mechanisms in there were cast iron. The only part that's tin is this cover right here holding the uh, tight bars. Um, the paper release is pretty standard. It's just this lever right here, and that uh, uh, takes pressure off the feed rollers. And then these little uh, paper guides, I thought it was pretty creative. These lock into place, they don't just slide, so you need to uh, throw that lever over and move them uh, on each one of those, which is, uh, which is a little different, but uh, nothing super uncommon. One thing I didn't realize that this does not have ball bearings in the carriage uh, rails. It, it's just a slide. And I, online I found a uh, booklet that did some advertising. It was an advertising booklet for the Sun and it said the number two and a couple models up from that did not have uh, ball bearings and I think the, I'm not sure which model it was, but I think it was the four something uh, a lot more expensive than this one they were touting that it did have a ball bearing uh, system for the carriage and it still it moves really smooth and let's hit this release but it rides just on this rail and then this this rail up here um, it does it pretty well and and it really benefits with a little oil I think that was the biggest thing that wasn't working when I got it and the bell is really pretty that took a little adjustment, but it's all functioning now, save for the um, the ink. If anybody knows of a place where I can uh, find some good purple typewriter ink, I would appreciate it if you would let me know. And um, that's a quick overview of the sun uh, that I was lucky enough to get. So. Thank you guys for watching the videos. If you like them, please uh, like and subscribe. I'd appreciate it. And again, thanks for watching.